you're listening to Corb Conversations on the Business of Brands with Sudeep Chawla and Sharavana Raghavan. We're about what? 15 episodes in Sudeep? Yes. And we're already repeating topics? Really? Who said we are repeating topics, Sharan? <laughs> Measure what you treasure was one of your famous topics from the previous episodes. Yes, it was. And we're doing that again today? No, we're taking it forward. At that point, I said measure whatever you treasure. Now I'm taking it forward and telling everybody what to measure and how to measure. So basically telling them what the treasure is. No, so treasure they would have to discover on their own. Okay. Whatever they think is treasure, there are a few ways of measuring it. I'm telling them how to measure it. Ah uh, okay because i had made a point at that point in time that even if you don't have big budgets big agencies etc anybody can and everybody can measure it qualitatively or quantitatively i will focus more on quantitative today and give them some sort of a framework a simple one so is that all of them can logically think about uh, what they treasure and therefore what should they be measuring okay where do we start when we spoke about measuring whatever you treasure all business owners or brand owners treasure the sales of their brands all of them want to increase sales to make sure that they start on their journey of measuring it is important that all of them decide what is the route to sales for them and when i say route to sales sharan the idea is to think about what kind of marketing campaign you are going to trigger and how is it going to lead the consumer to buy or try your product okay if you are clear about that that route is something that will tell you what to measure and then how to analyze it but isn't that the million dollar question in marketing anyway how do you measure the money spent in marketing we have this famous saying that says half the money spent in marketing is wasted but the f- trouble is you don't know which half <laughs> yes are you solving for the global marketing problem with this episode i am actually only saying that you don't need to worry about which half is getting wasted <laughs> you are spending that money to move the consumer in a certain direction all you need to be clear about to start with is what is the route to that behavior amongst Got the it. consumers and if you become clearer then i can tell you a few ways in which you can logically measure whether your brand or your campaign is doing the uh, job that you envisaged it to do or not that's all fair but but how do you propose that we measure and more importantly every marketing campaign could be different right so what yes. do we measure so let me first introduce the framework all right and then we should take a few examples to see how do campaigns fit in there sure yeah so my theory is that any campaign that you create has to tick two out of these three boxes the first one is salience salience is about how well did, does your consumer remember your brand or your campaign right especially when there is tremendous amount of clutter around it right the stickiness of it the stickiness yeah and usually this becomes very very important when you are launching a new brand or a new variant right yeah, you might remember the jio dhan 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 ads which were pouring out of every orifice yeah <laughs> now the reason jio had done that and they had taken all the ipl superstars to announce it was because they wanted to announce that there is something called jio and hence that is called salience you're just right. making yourself known making yourself memorable etc to people second box is mind yeah or mind measures as we call them if you have to define them these are beliefs or attitudes that you want your consumer to associate with your brand or the other way to think about it is this is what do you want the consumer to believe about your brand it could be fact it could just be an emotional association Got fact it. as in this detergent makes the clothes whitest hmm. or an emotion like this drink is meant for adrenaline junkies things like that hmm. which might or might not have any fact around them 
बट इट्स एन एसोसिएशन विद गेट्स बिल्ट ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम और थ्रू अ सीरीज ऑफ प्लैंड इंटरवेंशन द थर्ड बॉक्स आफ्टर सेलियंस एंड माइंड मेजर इज बिहेवियर वेर यू क्लियरली डिटरमाइंड वॉट डू यू वॉन्ट द कंज्यूमर टू डू आफ्टर दे हैव बीन एक्सपोज टू योर कम्युनिकेशन और योर ब्रांड करेक्ट द थिंक फील डू एंड थिंक फील डू द डू इज द वन विच विल ट्रांसलेट इन टू बिहेवियर एवरीबडी वुड से वट डू वॉन्ट द कंज्यूमर टू डू ऑफकोर्स यू वॉन्ट द कंज्यूमर टू गो एंड बाय बट जस्ट बिफोर बाइंग because the consumer has not yet bought they have just seen your they seen your communication so usually you would want consumer to have an intention so this is where you measure their intent so therefore the three boxes are salience mind measure behavior and the theory is that you of course want to create behavior in every consumer the route to behavior either goes through salience or goes through mind measure if you as a brand owner as a business owner you are clear which route are you willing to take right now at this stage then it will be fairly easy for you to determine whether your brand campaign is moving in the right direction or the dollars or the money that you've spent is going in the right direction or not right that that makes sense but are you sure just three are you sure you don't want say you want to communicate disc- discount coupons and and f- collect more first party data about their pin code and how they're willing to click on a on a lead gen link and is that not, is that not something you want to measure right now so you might want to but the fact is that see sharan you have to these are all activities right these are outcomes of something that you've done for example if you're giving a discount code what you're trying to do possibly is tell the consumer that i'm giving you a great deal yeah and therefore you are driving association with a great deal or the discount co- code could be about creating trials yeah so right. therefore it could be about the behavior side mm-hmm. so these are all whatever you just said about clicks and discount codes and uh, ad buttons etc these are all means yeah but you have to what you have to measure is what are you doing to get to these means mm-hmm. yeah right it makes a lot of sense now yeah when you talk to people for example when i when i speak to any of my friends in startups or any of the people that i interact with most of them talk in terms of numbers which are ctrs cpl cac etc and i'm sure you as well as all our listeners are aware of these terms and many more of such kind these are the numbers that you regularly deal with right now these numbers usually are a resultant of what you are doing in your campaign yeah and these are post facto numbers and then you know a lot of the performance marketers will tell you let's tinker with something and let's see whether the cac is going up or going down right. whether your cpl is going up or going down whatever measure we are speaking about sharan today hmm. will help you scientifically tinker things when you say salience mind measures and behavior Hmm. wouldn't every campaign want to do all these three anyway any campaign when launched would create some amount of salience some amount of mind measure and therefore some amount of behavior so we're talking and about the proportions here yes so we are ah. saying that you know for a campaign at a particular stage one out of salience or mind measure is more important than the other for right. example i i come i go back to the same example jio dhan dhan adan i don't know what kind of mind measure it created in your head i'm fairly sure that most of the people didn't even understand what is jio at best they might have understood it's a broadband but nothing more than that possibly or even a phone to, just a phone sim card maybe and you know that to towards the fag end of the commercial because all you could see in the commercial was cricketers dancing it was pure salience without any association each marketer needs to be clear which out of the two salience or mind measure is more critical for their brand at that point in time and critical from a point of view of being able to drive business now i will take everybody a bit deeper into the things to measure awesome. under each one of these boxes let's go yeah so in fact my advice to all our listeners is if you are there 
it will be better if you take a pen or a pencil and possibly you know scribble along so that you are able to follow some of the terminologies being spoken about yeah while concepts might be clear the terminologies we will keep referring back to these terminologies later in the later part of the podcast as well so it'll just help if you jot those down right and if you're listening to it on any of the main platforms you can actually download these terms on your show notes also okay excellent let's get into our first box our first box is salience now within salience there are two things that you could possibly talk about there is the salience of your campaign and then there is salience of your brand campaign is the lead vehicle which people will first get exposed to and a marketer would hope and pray and plan that the campaign leads to brand salience so when we talk about campaign salience that at that point in time you are trying to determine two things number 1 is your campaign memorable and number 2 is it reaching people as a founder if you are going and doing this research on your own i will now try to break it down in that form so the first thing that we will speak about is executional cut through in marketing term we call it as ect suppose you launch the campaign and you are for example a denim brand and you have just launched what you call as responsible denim which means that your denim uses lesser water to be produced so therefore you launched a campaign now in that campaign you possibly uh, you know show a particular denim which is trying to save itself from water yeah it constantly shuns water and towards the end it says because it is a responsible denim just let let's imagine that creative as poor as it as poorly crafted as it may sound but i'm just crafting it on the go so if that's the creative yeah so therefore your first question to your intended target segment and you have to go to your intended target segment don't go to your friends you can go to your friends friends as long as they fall in the same segment you don't go to your friends because they tend to be biased you might not read the sample perfectly yeah they could be biased both ways correct number 2 uh, if you're doing a quant one which i'll encourage you to do to read mm-hmm. the data properly for every segment that you study you need at least 30 data points so you right. need to speak to at least 30 people yeah so for executional cut through you will go and ask the intended tg have you seen any denim ad recently if they say yes you would say can you please describe it to me if the intended person describes for example uh, some elements of your ad that i saw a denim and it was getting exposed to water but it was shunning water it was running away from water then you know your execution has cut through so your ect gets a tick then right. you ask them okay the creative that you just recall can you just tell me what brand it was for example it was sharan's denim so if the guy says it i think it was sharan's then you know your brand has been recalled so that measure the first one where you are not asking for the brand you are just asking for description of the ad it's called executional cut through the one where you said what is the brand and the guy recalls is called branded cut through okay yeah both these are unaided are spontaneous now you will meet a lot of people who might not be able to recall your ad unaided and don't right. be shocked with it you will meet a lot of them yeah for the best of the brands where i have worked the very best had at best sing, uh, double digit or lead single digits about 7 9% 10% 11% that kind of a cut through as in out of very simple percent it's about single digits out of 100 number yes. of people met yes. remember the execution cut through correct with the best of the ads wow so you know in single campaign done over a period of time possibly you can take it up to about 16 18 20 not more than that right because always be clear your brand your life revolves around your brand that your consumers doesn't yeah they have too many things to contend with in their life and your brand is one small speck within a big universe that their life is and hence it is quite possible 
that they might not remember the name of your brand and the advertising campaign run by it so it's perfectly okay don't be shocked and don't <laughs> give them bad looks true yeah all right so for all the people that you are not able to get any response on they might not be able to describe any ad of denim they therefore you will not even ask them which brand were they for you show them uh what is called as a card an ad card so what right. you do is you paste some excerpts of your ad where your brand name is not visible and then you ask them have you seen this ad anywhere if they say yes then you get a tick on a measure called creative reach cr so this is an aided element and then you ask them okay if you've seen this ad do you remember the brand if they are able to remember the brand it is called bcr which is branded creative reach so therefore we spoke about four measures and all these four measures were for campaign salience mm -hmm. we spoke about executional cut through branded cut through creative reach branded creative reach the broad way of understanding this is that if your brand has creative reach which means that your media has done the job of showing it to people if you have branded creative reach which means that your ad has decent amount of brand integration such that people will not miss the brand if they if they see the ad and the converse is also true if your bcr is very very low which means that your ad is still being remembered your brand isn't so therefore right. your brand integration is poor it, it could possibly be helping some other brand also at times possibly or maybe just helping the category yeah and none of the brands yeah But, so it's a social service campaign then hmm. then if you have executional cut through it means your execution is really memorable people remember it right for example zuzu might have had a great ect right yeah now an interesting question for all of you think about it what would they test zuzu on from a branded cut through point of view hmm. was it vodafone was it vodafone postpaid services or were they exact services that they were talking about actually interesting question even i can't recall that anymore yeah so they had <laughs> some 15 commercials across two or three ipls each commercial spoke about a very different service yeah so for each ad they could have tested it for the service that they were advertising my belief is that at a campaign level they wanted to show that there are significant number of value added services that they are providing so their branded cut through would have been for vodafone value added services mm. yeah so therefore if your campaign is memorable you will get ect or executional cut through and if your if your brand is well integrated into it you will get branded cut through now branded cut through is marketers nirvana because people remember your brand unaided people remember your campaign unaided so your job is done you cannot you should not ideally abuse your media agency or your creative agency <laughs> if your cr is low abuse your media agency if your ect is low abuse your creative agency <laughs> or you know that's a lighter way of saying it ideally you should relook at the brief that you issued them there is possibly some problem in your media brief or your creative brief i'd like to go a little deeper on that Mm. Mm. Can you tell me why the media agency is responsible for the creative reach, yeah. and the creative agency is responsible for the execution cut through? Sure. A simple way of understanding this, Sharan, for everybody, would be that uh, it is media agency's job to translate your brief into a plan which makes sure that a certain amount of intended target segment gets to see your campaign. now at the very least even if it is a poor campaign even if it is a poor creative you expect that people will at least be able to recall it once they are aided with the photographs from the campaign if you are not seeing any kind of aided recall also which means that a lot of the people haven't seen your campaign hmm. which means either your campaign if your media plan is not delivering on your intended tg or your your intended tg itself is wrong the product or the category is completely irrelevant either ways there is a problem in either your brief or the media execution once the media agency has done the job of 
exposing the creative to people then the quality of the creative determines its memorability as well as people's ability to recall the brand for which the campaign was executed got it if your creative agency has not made a cre- a very memorable campaign or they have not been able to integrate a brand into the campaign hmm. then it's a problem so that is how you should think about salience now this is for all everywhere where you are desperately trying to register your brand or a sub brand or a variant with the consumers now a logical consequence of campaign salience is brand salience that right. whatever you do it should lead back to your brand and from right. a brand salience it's a very simple thing you measure three things they are you know almost a logical consequence of each other the first one is spontaneous brand awareness now within spontaneous brand awareness a lot of you might have heard this brand called toma this term called toma top of mind awareness i will explain what is toma mm. with this example so mm. you answer okay. my question how many brands of denim are you aware of brands of denim hmm i'd say levi's hmm i'd say lee hmm spiker hmm flying machine hmm just hold there okay you said levi's lee spiker flying machine yeah at least four of them you re- recounted mm-hmm. yeah so therefore for you as a consumer if you are the only uh, observation set or the consumer set that i have so levi's top of mind awareness is 100% got it because okay. that's the first brand that you have recalled mm. you have levi's as your toma now all the four brands that you recalled all four of them are part of your spont brand the, the brands that i could spontaneously, spontaneously name spontaneously come up with so god for a new brand i definitely want to be part of the spontaneous brand awareness right and if i become toma for few people i'll be very happy but over a period of time all the market leader brands want to have their spontaneous brand awareness and top of mind awareness at almost the same level hmm. so a cadbury dairy milk would want that amongst all the people that can think about me know about me i should be the first brand that they should talk about right they want almost 100% synonymity with the word chocolate right that's why that's marketing nirvana right the brand ends up defining the entire category for the consumer Correct. so that's that's what brands aim for so from a brand salience point of view we spoke about top of mind awareness mm-hmm. we spoke about spont brand mm. the third thing that we will speak about is aided brand awareness so suppose your brand now this is sharan's denim now i will show you logos of different brands mm. including sharan's denim and i'll ask you which one of these do you remember or you can recognize right if you put your finger on saying yeah sharan's denim i can recognize so therefore sharan's denim was not a part of toma it was not a part of spontaneous brand awareness it was however a part of aided brand awareness right got now if you have a brand you advertised it and you were not able to be a part of toma or spont brand or aided brand then only god can help you <laughs> yeah You're listening to Corp Conversations on the Business of Brands. Your hosts are Sudeep Chawla, marketing practitioner, business leader and educator to advertising and marketing professionals, and Sharavana Raghavan of Vitril Innovations, consultants to consumer-facing brands and businesses. For more information, go to corpcast.net. If you find this podcast helpful please help us by telling your friends and rating us Second box hmm. is slightly simpler mind measures mind measures now first box was the major box where most of your technical measures etc exist the okay. next two boxes are fairly simple and so therefore if you want to keep your pen and pencil down you can <laughs> but the second one clearly as i said earlier mind measure is about mental association right yeah again some specific attributes now this is where i want to draw everybody's attention to two aspects first aspect is about category attributes mm-hmm. yeah second aspect is about 
brand attributes what do i mean by category attributes for example let's look at soft drink category now pepsi has deliberately tried to advertise innovate in a manner such that it presents itself position itself as a soft drink for youngsters so therefore whenever pepsi is testing for its mind measures what all will it test for to have a right to play in this segment it needs to have at least passing score or score which is at par with the other competitors on some of the category attributes mm. for example it quenches thirst that's the rule of the category if you don't quench thirst you don't get counted so therefore it will definitely test whether i still quench thirst or not yeah and you should test for it because over a period of time your competitors might redefine the category their formulations might change etc etc and hence it is always good to keep testing yourself on category attributes so category attributes performance give you the right to play basically your table stakes are you are you having the entry barrier are you meeting the entry requirements correct. in the category correct so if you're a chocolate brand you have to be a good tasting chocolate brand right yeah you might be a healthy chocolate or whatever you are if you don't test good unfortunately you will not be able to play in that space the second part was the brand attribution hmm. or the brand attribute so therefore for pepsi they will want to check which brand do you associate with these words is a brand for youngsters like me and then they will list down all sorts of brands coke pepsi dew thumbs up etc etc and then they will see how many people tick on pepsi mm-hmm. yeah this is where you want to be differentiated you want to have higher uh, endorsements as compared to your competition mm-hmm. in your category attribute you can be at par with your competition in your branded attribute you want to be distinguished from your competition got it if you are not then there is a problem either you have not uh, chosen the right attribute or you've not been able to distinguish yourself on that attribute so for example i'm reminded of this campaign men will be men yes yeah very interesting campaign very long running campaign yeah it's a uh, it's a campaign which is quite endearing for a lot of people and a lot of those people might not be consuming that brand also true it is seagram's campaign yes yeah but but the execution is quite lovely now when i think about it and the reason i bring this up is it's a campaign which does not show any product yes <laughs> yeah so therefore that is why i wanted to push the envelope and say now if these guys are testing well, what will they test it on mm. yeah now it's a long running campaign it's not an awareness campaign for sure right it's a mind measure led campaign yeah so therefore what is the mind measure they might be testing for yeah so therefore they it will say it is definitely not a drink for youngsters again the exactly. kind of people that they show the kind of you know situations they portray it is for sure a drink for middle aged men they would be testing on mind measure and endorsements against this statement which says it is for men like me basically middle aged men who want to be boys again yeah <laughs> middle aged married men yeah who take liberties with both their age as well as their marriage <laughs> right it's it's a lovely campaign i it definitely is. it is and I, therefore i wanted that. to bring it up but mind measure is slightly simpler mm-hmm. but you need to choose the right attributes against which you want to take endorsements from your consumers right it basically depends on the positioning you're going for and yeah. to check if you're fitting into the positioning with the execution yeah, yeah. and right. in fact if you are fearful that you're going for a certain positioning but you might end up on the other side please check the other side also mm. there is no harm in doing so now that you are going to the consumer might as well check it now the third box now we are going to behavior okay behavior again is simpler one yeah so in behavior now that the consumer you've created some kind of a recall or you have given some kind of association to consumer what do you want the consumer to do you would want consumer to go and buy now before the act of buying exists something else which is called the intention to purchase so you check with them so next time for example you are again the denim brand 
and you are speaking to you know teenagers who did, you know are going to are possibly your target segment you will go and ask them next time you go to the market and you want to buy a denim which denim are you likely to buy and if they name your brand again this is a idiot question so you write mm-hmm. all the brands there if they name right. your brand then you know there is an itp or an intention to purchase, purchase. intention to purchase ideally should lead to purchase which means that it should translate into sales which means that it should translate into what is usually termed as market share depends on your category whether you are looking at volume market share or value market share but ideally it should roughly translate into your market share now if your intention to purchase is high but your delivered market share after some time is low which means that there is some kind of a friction between the intent and the final action mm. and that friction could either be availability of your product you might find that you are not even available people are going with the intent they are not able to find you right or there is some friction in the purchase process it could be price or it could be anything yeah price yeah. could be your channel mm. could be your website could be your landing page could be your, your navigation your anything. payment gateway <laughs> payment gateway anything yeah yeah or your competitor is doing excellent bottom of the funnel marketing right and l- taking away luring away the consumers who intend to even purchase you correct in luring away the consumers who are possibly added you in their uh, basket if you study these in consonance with each other it will give you an excellent uh, reading of what possibly is going on what to correct for another measure sharan that we you know usually talk about in a behavior sense you measure what is called as operational share and in short it is called op share Mm-hmm. now op share is where you ask the person last time you went to the market which brand of denim did you buy mm, you go beyond intention to, and to check what did you do the last time correct now Not- they might say okay i i bought sharan's denim etc so you see how many people how, what percentage of endorsement is sharan's denim getting mm-hmm. and what is the market share so now you have over a period of time you have intention to purchase you have market share and you have operational share and then you should be able to compare all of these in and see where is where does your gap lie and that is how you start making meaningful meaningful conclusions if you have understood these measures you will be able to read them alongside other data that you might have which is your cac your ctr your cpl etc etc and your market share and your sales and therefore you should be able to make meaningful conclusions as to what part of my marketing is working hmm. what part of my marketing needs a tweak and you know in in your further executions in your further funnel creation you will be able to create significantly better results this all makes a lot of sense really and mm. i think you've taken a lot of liberty in creating and abusing sharan's genes today but i want <laughs> to push you back on your most creative creation mm. can you explain this in the context of your healthy chocolate concept Oh yes that same example comes back to haunt me <laughs> yes <laughs> okay so let me recall we created healthy chocolate mm-hmm. uh we said that we will sell it in multi packs yes nccs a women in metro nccs a women yes correct and portion control portion control etc etc so that was our zone okay excellent so suppose sharan we are launching it it's a mm-hmm. new launch mm mm-hmm. now my route to sales is salient salient to behavior right so i launch my campaign and therefore i straight away get into ad awareness or ad salient or campaign salient mm-hmm. and brand salient measures so campaign salient measures i will check for executional cut through mm-hmm. and branded cut through i will check for creative reach branded creative reach yeah amongst people who don't recall me spontaneously mm-hmm. then basis that i will also check for branded awareness which is my toma mm-hmm. and my spont brand spontaneous brand awareness and then i will also check for aided brand awareness okay yeah. so when i look when i've looked through all of these i will definitely know to what extent has my brand registered yeah and number 2 whether my campaign has done the job of registering it or not whether mm-hmm. my execution has registered or not whether people remember what brand was this execution for right. and for example charan i have worked with celebrity 
for a fairly long time and one of the biggest celebrity that India has ever seen, Mr. Amitabh Bachchan. Mm-hmm. I can tell you that most of the brands struggle in terms of BCR or BCT, which is your branded part, you know, in celebrity advertising. A lot of the people remember Amitabh Bachchan for right. an ad. They might not remember the brand at all. You might remember, yeah, there was some hair oil ad that Amitabh Bachchan was a part of. You might not even remember the hair oil. Mm. Well, Navratan Cool has been paying crores of rupees, but they might not be gaining unless you use the celebrity very, very well. There are a lot of ads that I see where the celebrity becomes the brand and the brand becomes a subset. So therefore, awareness yeah, or salience is the route to my sales. Okay, so I think I'm going to put the question differently to you. Hmm. For most new brands, I think this hmm. makes sense. I don't see new brands deviating from this framework too much. Yeah. What about existing brands, the larger brands? Wouldn't their priorities be different? How would they go about measuring these? Okay. Why don't we take the same example forward? Cut to a couple of years later. The same healthy chocolate brand has been around for some time. Um, It has already penetrated all the digital uh, first uh, consumers, the trials have happened, etc., etc. Mm-hmm. Now that I've reached that particular level, I have done about whatever 70 80 crores of business. That's my annual run rate, ARR, as they call it. Mm-hmm. Now I want to get to the next level. Now, this is where my consumer set, the chosen consumer set, starts to make a difference. Now, NCCS A Women was our chosen consumer set. Right. Now, if we have to make a specific difference to that particular consumer set, Mm -hmm. then uh, I would have to create significant penetration and frequency amongst them. Mm. So therefore, now my campaign would be crafted in a manner such that I start getting them to claim affinity towards my brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So suppose I launch a campaign where I, you know, picture this that uh, there is this uh, NCCS a woman who is leading her life and she's actually you know she's the one who is wanting to become a perfect you know perfect mother wants Mm -hmm. to have a perfect career etc everything is perfect and therefore within that perfection her small moments of joy are missing right and therefore then I present my product as something which is a responsible consumption product which gives her small moments of joy without necessarily destroying her diet or her dietary control. Right. Yeah. So that is something that I go with. Now with this kind of a campaign, Sharon, I'm clear my route to sales is via mind measure and then behavior. Yeah. Salience is already done. Now, of course, when I'm doing this, salience will get created. If I'm going to those people, if I have the time, etc., I might as well measure the salience. But what is critical for me is mind measure. Mm. So therefore, what do I measure with them? I measure mental association on the attribute is a chocolate brand for women like me. Mm. It's the way you're talking to NCCSA women. You want them to say, this is the chocolate for me. Yes. So I will say, how many of the following brands do you associate with this statement? This is a chocolate brand for women like me. And then I'll list down all the brands. Right. And I'll hope that I will get the best endorsements amongst all of them. Got it. Yeah. And then I'll go to the behavior measure. And because I've been around for some time, I will will definitely check for intention to purchase ITP. Mm -hmm. But I will also check for operational share. Right. Because you've been around, maybe they bought it the last time. Correct. Correct. And that also, so your operational share tells me what is their claimed purchase last time around. If their ITP intention to purchase is higher than their claimed purchase, which means that the campaign seems to have done something. Right. And hopefully it will result into some kind of a market share gain. Wow. Wow. That's that's awesome, Sudeep. I think it's been a pretty pithy episode today. Mm. So we talked about salience. We talked about Salience being of two types, which is for campaign and for the brand. Mm. Then we spoke about mind measures and behavioral inputs. Now, we then broke that out and to say when you should focus on each of these and what they mean for the brand. 
And you also covered how it would be for a new brand versus an existing brand, how these priorities might change. Something tells me there's more to this topic. <laughs> yeah, the, actually, uh, you know, there's, there's lots more. I think we can do one more episode. Wow. I think I think I look forward to that episode as well. But this itself has been extremely informative and I'm sure very useful for the audience. So thank you so much for that, Siddhi. Thanks, Sharon. Thank you for listening to Corp. Conversations on the business of brands with Sudeep Chawla and Sharona Raghavan. Subscribe and learn more at corpcast.net. That's C O B B C A S T.net. Corpcast.